In this problem, we have a situation that involves external forces on a system of two spheres. A five kilogram sphere is at rest on a horizontal surface. Okay, so we're dealing with a situation near Earth's surface, so gravity is going to come into this picture. A second sphere of mass two kilograms falls vertically onto this sphere at an angle of 45 degrees. The speed immediately before impact is u. Now the five kilogram mass is constrained to move entirely in the horizontal direction. So immediately after impact, the five kilogram mass moves to the left, of course. So we're assuming that this table is perfectly smooth and so on. And um, this surface does not give in any sense because if, if there's some give in this surface, then this, the velocity of the five kilogram mass immediately after impact will not be entirely in the horizontal direction. Now, since the five kilogram mass moves entirely in the horizontal direction, it's convenient to use a set of axes where one of the axes, axes is in the horizontal direction. Okay, so we have a set of ij axes here. Now, the unit vector i could point to the right, as is the usual convention, but here we see that it's pointing to the left in the, the direction of the final velocity of the five kilogram sphere. Okay, we can do that, of course. The directions are arbitrary, and this might make t make the calculation a little bit simpler. So the positive i or x-axis is pointing to the left. Now we will see another reason for a set of axes like these later, because we will be considering momentum conservation in the x or horizontal direction only. However, we should consider the fact that when two spheres collide, the force on each sphere is entirely along the line joining the centers of the sphere. And we know that since the force on the two kilogram sphere is in this direction, this is the force on the two kilogram sphere due to the five kilogram sphere, the y component of the initial velocity does not change because the y component, well, the component perpendicular to the line of impact, we're calling it the y component here. Um, um, is not affected by this force, because this force has no component in this direction, which we're calling y. You might say that gravity is acting during the collision, and indeed indeed it is, of course. Okay, And you might say that that affects, the f uh, that changes the y component in some way. And indeed it would change the y component if gravity was acting long enough. But the time for the collision is extremely small. It's a matter of a few hundred microseconds. And the force of gravity, in other words, the weight of the sphere is much smaller than the force on the sphere due to the impact, so that we can ignore the effects of gravity on the two kilogram sphere during the collision. Obviously, after the collision, the effects of gravity become significant. But during the time of the collision, the effects of gravity are insignificant. So if this sphere was free to fall during the time of the collision, its velocity vector u would barely change at all if you know if this other five kilogram sphere wasn't present and the sphere was just falling freely during the time of the collision which is a matter of a few hundred microseconds vector u would not change and hence this component would not change okay so then you can see the reason why we have to have another set of axes so you can put this axis this this is the positive axis pointing down the line of impact and here you can see the positive y-axis is pointing up this way but of course you could have you can put it pointing this way it doesn't matter now we're going to describe the, the motion of these two spheres using both sets of axes and we know that i and j are unit vectors that is vectors of magnitude one pointing in in the direction shown but we're going to treat these as unit vectors also so this vector here is unit vector x, not to be confused with i. Normally i is lying along the x-axis. Um, you know, it's obviously this x has a different meaning from the usual meaning. But this x here actually is a unit vector, a vector of magnitude 1, similarly for y. Now let's look at the forces on the two spheres, well the internal forces. Well, there's a force on the 2 kilogram sphere due to the 5 kilogram sphere, 
which is along the line joining the centres of the two spheres, that's the line of impact. And by Newton's third law, there's an equal but opposite force on the 5 kilogram sphere due to the 2 kilogram sphere. So these are the internal forces on the system. The system just consists of the two spheres. And uh, as we've seen before, momentum is normally conserved along this direction because normally there are no external forces along this direction. However, in this picture, we do have external forces along this direction. You know, we have the force of gravity on the 2 kilogram sphere, the weight of the sphere is vertically down, and that indeed has a component along the line of impact, so that's a problem. And another external force on the system is this contact force on the 5 kilogram sphere, and that indeed has a component along the line of impact, so this is the force, the contact force then, you know, here's the component. However, what we can consider is the horizontal component of each of these forces. Okay, these are equal but opposite forces by Newton's third law, regardless of you know the masses of the spheres or how what the speed of impact is. So that means that the horizontal components are obviously equal but opposite. What we could do is apply Newton's third law just in the horizontal direction. Now, why would we do that? Well, there's no external force on the system, that is the two spheres, along this direction. Okay, I'll just make this look clear. Let's say the force of gravity in this sphere is vertically down. Well, that has no component in the horizontal direction. It's perpendicular to it, of course. And uh, the contact force on this sphere, due to this surface, is perpendicular to the horizontal, so it has no component in the horizontal direction. So there's no external force in the horizontal direction on the system. So we could do, as we saw previously, we, you know, we could apply Newton's third law in the horizontal direction only and derive the conservation of momentum in this direction, just like we saw previously in a previous video. So we, we, we would derive the conservation of momentum for the I direction, that's the horizontal direction. So let's apply it here. I won't go through the derivation. Here's the momentum before the collision in the I direction. So the 5 kilogram sphere is at rest to begin with, so its velocity in the I direction is 0, so it's 0 I. As for the 2 kilogram sphere, its initial velocity is entirely in the vertical direction. So it's um, horizontal component is zero. Now after the collision, the momentum of the five kilogram sphere is its mass, which is five, times its velocity in the i direction, which is p times i. Okay, that's what we have here. And as for this mass, its momentum after the collision is its mass, which is two, times the i component of its velocity. That's this here. So all of this is zero, of course, so we can just cancel the i's, and we get a relationship between p and a. Now we will be interested in finding out what p and a are, and indeed what b is. Okay, we want to get the velocities of both spheres immediately after impact. By the way, I'm, s I'm assuming that the coefficient of restitution between the two spheres is e. So what we are given here is the coefficient of restitution and the initial velocity of the 2 kilogram sphere, which is u. So we're, we're going to get the final velocities in terms of e and u. Next we will relate the velocities to the xy set of axes. So we're going to consider the velocity of the 2 kilogram mass immediately before the impact. So let's go and look at that. So the velocity vector is vertically down, so we want its components in the x and y directions. Well, it's quite easy to see what they are from this picture. Here's the y component, it's actually negative as you, as you can see, and here's the x component, which is positive, it's in the positive x direction. So, you know, this is u sine 45 or u over root 2, and this component here is u cos 45, which is also u over root 2. 
So here's the x component, we multiply that by unit vector x, and this is going to be positive as we saw, but the y component is negative. Its magnitude is u sine 45, or u over root 2, multiplied by unit vector y. Now let's look at the situation after the collision for the 2 kilogram mass. So let's look at the velocity vector. Well, it's going to look like it's pointing in this direction. Let's suppose that we don't know anything about the direction of the velocity of the 2 kilogram sphere after the collision. And uh, let's just look at a general vector ai plus bj, you know, relating it to the IG, ij axes. So I'll draw it up here. Let's suppose that ai plus bj is like this. Of course, we know it's not going to be pointing in this direction. So here's our vector ai plus bj. Uh, let's look at its vertical component. That's its j component. It's bj, of course. And its i component is going to be this one here, a times i. So we're assuming here, you know, that a and b are both positive, because the positive y-axis is pointing to the left and the positive j-axis is pointing vertically up. Okay, so let's suppose that we have resolved our vector. In Here's our vector, but we've resolved it into its two components. Now for convenience, I'm showing the components looking like this, but of course they're not going to point in these directions. I'm just doing this for convenience. AI is positive, BJ is positive in this picture. Okay, so but A and B are positive numbers. Now you'll see that it's much easier to work with the components because rather than trying to, you know, get the component of AI plus BJ, get the X and Y components of AI plus BJ, we, you know, we can look at these components because we know what angles these make with the X and Y axes. They make, they actually make 45 degree angles. You know, you can see it here. If we extend this on, here's the Y axis. This angle is 45 degrees. Okay, because um, because this one is 45 degrees, the angle of impact is 45 degrees. And the same is true for the vertical axis. Actually, it's probably, I'll probably show the components here. Here's your um, f um, final velocity of two, two kilogram mass. Here's the horizontal component. That's clearly a 45 degree angle. It's horizontal. And uh, the line of impact is at 45 degrees to the vertical. So this is AI. This is what AI will actually look like. A will be negative. And here's BJ. But we can show BJ over here, and it's very clear that this angle is also 45 degrees. It's, ver it's opposite this angle. It's a pair of opposite angles. But anyway, we just want a general relationship between vector AI, uh, any vector AI plus BJ, regardless of its direction, and the X and Y axes. So we've seen that y-axis is like this, and the x-axis looks like this, and all these angles are 45 degrees. Okay, so you can see now it's much easier to relate AI to, um, to the x and y-axis. This angle in here is also 45 degrees. So if we took AI plus BJ, it might look like this. You know, if we sum these two um, by the parallelogram law, of course, it's very hard to see how to get the components of it because we don't have the angle between it and the X and Y axis. So by looking at its I and J components, we can easily get the components in the X and Y directions. So let's start by looking at the component of vector ai in the x direction. Well, you know, a is going to be some positive number. So the magnitude of this vector is a. So we multiply a by cos 45 to get the side adjacent to it in this right angle triangle. So a cos 45 is the component of this, of this vector in the x direction. And of course, we have to multiply that by unit vector x now. So unit vector x is in this direction. It's a vector of magnitude 1. And uh, the magnitude of this component in the x direction is a cos 45, or a over root 2. Now we get the magnitude of vector a in the y direction. So we project a tip of the vector onto 
the y-axis and this is what we're after it's adjacent to 45 so it's going to be a cos 45 but it's in the y direction so we multiply it by unit vector y so you see adding these together gives us vector a in the xy coordinate system I'm not showing unit vector x, unit vector x might look like this and unit vector y might look like this next we need to get vector bj in the xy coordinate system so let's look at the x component of vector bj well you can see that with this setup the x component is going to be negative Okay, so we project the tip of vector bj here and here's its x com component its magnitude is b, b is some positive number that's why it was convenient to make bj positive so we just multiply b by cos 45 but then we must um, give it a negative sign because it's in the negative x direction okay the positive x direction is down here here's the negative x direction so um, I'll just clear that now just to make this a bit easier so what we have is minus b cos 45 times unit vector x so the x component of b the x component is negative the x component of vector bj is negative it's it's pointing that way now let's consider the y component of vector bj so we have to protect the head project the head onto the y axis and what's its magnitude going to be? Well, we multiply the magnitude of this vector, which is b, b is positive, times the cos of 45. And that's multiplied by unit vector y. So again, rather than resolving the entire vector ai plus bj, which could look something like this, rather than resolving this, it doesn't necessarily have to lie along the y-axis, of course, let's put it here just to rather than resolving this vector in the x and y directions we, we just resolve the components of it the i and j components of it in the x and y directions and we just added up all those components so it's, that's an, an equivalent operation um, but it's also a much easier operation because we have the angles between the components and the x and y axes cos 45 is 1 over root 2 so we just gathered up the x terms and the y terms now let's consider the 5 kilogram mass well before the collision the 5 kilogram mass is at rest so you know its velocity vector is 0x plus 0y which is just going to be 0 so that's straightforward now the situation after is a little tricky but not as tricky as the previous part um, let's just draw out the x and y axes again we know the final velocity of the 5 kilogram sphere is going to be in the positive i direction it's, we're, we are calling it pi we know that this angle is 45 and also this one must be 45 because these have to add up to 90 of course so the magnitude of this vector is p p is some positive number as we know because the i direction is pointing to the left p is the speed of the 5 kilogram sphere after impact so we just get its components in the x and y direction so we can see here that this is p this one is p cos 45 in the positive x direction so p cos 45 x and the j component is just is also p cos 45 or the y component is p cos 45 now next we use we need to use the fact that for the two kilogram sphere the y component of the velocities does not change during the impact okay let's so let's see those again So here's the y component of vector u immediately before impact, the y component of velocity immediately before, and here's the y component immediately after 
these must be the same during the collision which as I said lasts for s such a short interval of time that gravity is not going to change these components significantly by the way of course they're meant to be parallel these two vectors are meant to be identical we can see clearly that this one has magnitude u times cos 45 or u over root 2 so this one down here must have magnitude u over root 2 so let's look at the y component of this vector well we're not long after getting it so here it is so this thing um, must have magnitude u over root 2 now the y component must be negative okay so this is actually this this is vector minus u over root 2 times unit vector y because it's pointing in a negative y direction okay so this vector would be minus u over root 2 times unit vector y so this one here is also minus u over root 2 times y okay so that gives us this equation here we can equate this to minus u over root 2 so this is our second equation okay we can multiply across by root 2 okay so that's using the fact that the y component doesn't change since again as a reminder the force on this sphere is entirely in this direction um, the force of impact the force of gravity as I said is extremely small compared to this force and acts for such a very short interval of time during the collision so it's ignored so it doesn't change the velocities during the collision um, so this force doesn't um, has no component in the y direction so it doesn't change the velocity in the y direction the last piece of information that we need to use is incorporating the coefficient of restitution Newton's um, law of restitution applies along this direction so we need to get the relative velocity of the spheres along this direction before the collision and the relative velocity of the spheres along this direction after the collision so we can write restitution law like this the velocity of the 5 kilogram sphere relative to the 2 kilogram sphere in the x direction that's along the line of impact is minus e times the uh, initial relative velocity of the 5 kilogram sphere to the 2 kilogram sphere along the x direction okay so let's get the final velocity of the 5 kilogram sphere in the x direction so here's the 5 kilogram sphere um, here's the x direction we know that the 5 kilogram sphere is constrained to move to the left its velocity is or its speed is p the magnitude of this vector so in the x direction you know we have to multiply p by cos 45 so that's p over root 2 times unit vector x and uh, we want the final velocity of the of the 2 kilogram sphere in the x direction well we just go over here and we can see that it's this thing here so here's the initial velocity of the 5 kilogram sphere in the x direction well we know that it's zero because it's at rest the initial velocity of the um, two kilograms sphere in the x direction well that's straightforward so let's have a look at that again so we want the two kilogram spheres velocity in the x direction here it is well we can see it's u cos 45 in magnitude or u over root 2 okay and it's in the positive x direction so we multiply by unit vector x all right so we can just get rid of those x's multiply across by root 2 and we get this relation okay so what we are given remember is the initial speed of the sphere and the coefficient of restitution e <clears throat> so we're going to get a b and p in terms of e and u 
I'll start by getting rid of P. 5P is minus 2A, so P is minus 2 fifths A. So I'm taking the first equation and plugging in for P. P is minus 2 fifths A, so we get an equation in A and B. So I've multiplied all this by 5 and gathered up the A's, and we can combine this equation with the second equation. So we could multiply the second equation by 7. So 7a plus 7b equals minus 7u. So combining these two equations, we have b in terms of e and u. Now we need to get a and p in terms of e and u. Okay, so we use this e second equation here and uh, um, write minus u is minus 12u over 12. So, um, okay, so this works out to be minus 5 twelfths u times 1 plus e. So now at last we can write down the final velocity of sphere 2. I'm just calling it v2. We know it's ai plus bj, so I filled in for a and b that we just that we just worked out. Next we need to get p. Well, the easiest thing to do is use the first equation here. So p is minus 2 fifths times a. So from this we get the final velocity of the 5 kilogram sphere. It's 1 sixth into u times 1 plus e times i. So let's uh, just note a few things here about the final velocity of sphere 2. Notice that this quantity here is negative. So that, that makes sense. Um, you know, if we go back to the original picture, the i component had to be negative. Well, we can see that from this relation, actually. You know, p is positive, so a must be negative. Okay, so the i component of the final velocity is clearly negative. But we, we also see that the j component is negative. So here's the j component. Why is this negative? Well, e is a number between 0 and 1. So 5 times e is a number between 0 and 5. So 5e is less than 7. So 5e minus 7 is clearly negative. Finally, let's look at energy conservation for the elastic collision. So you plug E equals 1 into the final velocities of the spheres, and this is what you get for the velocities. Um, to get the kinetic energies, we need the speeds squared. So you need to calculate the speed of this, just square the components and sum them. That's your speed squared. Do the same for this. Well, it's only got one component, so you just square it. So let's get the kinetic energy before the collision. Well, that's half the mass of the 2 kilogram sphere. That's half of 2 times its speed squared. So what was its speed squared before the collision? Well, the speed was u. So there's its speed squared, and we have to add on the kinetic energy of the 5 kilogram mass just before the collision. So it's half its mass times its speed squared, which is 0, of course. So the kinetic energy before is just u squared. And what about the kinetic energy after? Well, the kinetic energy of the 2 kilogram mass is half its mass times this quantity. And we need to get the kinetic energy of the 5 kilogram mass, so it's half its mass, which is 5, times its speed squared. So adding those together, we get 18 u squared over 18, or just u squared. So we can see that the kinetic energy before equals the kinetic energy after, for the case where e is equal to 1. So in other words, no energy is lost in the, in the collision. So, you know, that's what we would expect to get when e is 1.